Today's project is this 1978 Trabant Tramp. And the brakes don't work. There we go. <laughs> and the project goal is simple. I just need to make this thing stop and go. Before we go into the shop, what is this thing? Well, it's a 1978 Travant Tramp, or at least that's what the ID plate says. Now, the Tramp is the civilian version of the military version of the Trabant. The military version was called the Kubel, which Google Translate tells me is German for bucket, and it was basically a dull green Trabant with a fabric roof. The Tramp isn't a whole lot different from the Kubel, and if this is really a Tramp, then that means they offered the civilian version painted in the same military green as the Kubel's. Although this one has been painted over with this black paint you can see here. This is the only remnant of the original green paint. And as you can see, most evidently by the dash here, this car has been hilariously and extensively customized. Apparently by someone with no restraint whatsoever, as it evidenced by the yellow dash right here. And there's a lot more to it than that. It has chrome bumpers, externally mounted horns, there's chrome bits everywhere, which look incredibly, incredibly tacky. The seats have been reupholstered, which actually don't look too bad. The interior has been carpeted where there previously was no carpeting. All the wiring has been homebrew converted to 12 volts with no organization whatsoever and the cheapest wiring imaginable. There's a radio system in here and possibly the most hilarious modification is the sound deadening on a Trabant with a fabric roof. Why? It doesn't matter. It was their prerogative to do all these customizations. We just have to live with it now. Just, why yellow? And before you ask, no, this isn't my car. I borrowed this car from the owner to make it go and make it stop so he could sell it. I offered to fix this car because I have a special tool that I'll mention in a second. And because frankly, I just wanted to have some experience with this car because how many Trabant Tromps could there possibly be in the United States? Probably like, I don't know, five, maybe. Lastly, thank you to my patrons at patreon.com for providing all of the parts in today's little mini project. You're allowing me to work on this car at no cost to the owner, and hopefully you're getting some entertainment value out of it as well, even if I am just working on some brakes. And with that said, on to the shop. Well, my assistant over there that looks identical to me raises the car up onto the lift. Let me explain to you the brake drum removal tool for the Trabant. I often hear people on the internet usually saying, well, a Trabant can be fixed with simple tools. They can go on forever. Well, that's mostly true, but the notable exception is the brake drums because to remove them, you have to have this specialized tool that wasn't easy to come by. I had to scour eBay in Germany using Google Translate to find this stupid little thing. And it is an absolute requirement on Trabants made before 1984 because they use conical shaped axle stubs and the brake drums wedge over top of them. And you need this to wrap around the little lip, you'll see in a minute, to get the brake drum off. You cannot use gear pullers, it doesn't work. I tried on my Trabant. It broke two of the gear pullers and my spirit. So yeah, most of the car can be worked on with simple tools, but not all of it. Once you get over the need for the specialized brake drum puller tool, working on the brakes is not surprisingly very simple. And I'll just take you through it step by step here. <coughs> by the way, can we all laugh together about how, how hilarious it is that whoever customized this car decided they needed some security lug nuts on it for a stamped steel wheel painted black? Who's gonna steal your wheel? It's, it's not that special. <coughs> and just take the wheel and tire off, there we go. There's no brake drum on it. No wonder it was making a noise. You know, this whole time I've been calling it a brake drum puller tool. That's not true. It's actually the wheel hub puller tool. But anyway, regardless, there's no brake drum on here. Now to take off the axle stub nut that wasn't, that was just hand tight, apparently. Wow. You know what happened? I bet you anything they tried to fix these brakes before, but found out they didn't have the specialized tool that was needed. I'm just guessing though. All right, here's how the specialized tool works. So you have this little lip around the edge here, and this goes in two halves with the little threaded bit in the middle of it. That's too far down. Wrap it around like that. 
almost like no not quite you're almost there like that and then secure the two halves together with this collar that I put on backwards with this collar and now it just works like a gear puller no it's breaking free I can feel it <sighs> oh, got it oh and that's why you can't use a gear puller <laughs> There, it's off. There is probably a special tool for removing these springs as well, but I prefer to try to kill myself with needle nose pliers instead. That's the more fun round anyway. Ow! That hurt. To heck with it. Let's just try to do some bending magic here. In case you were wondering, Trabant brake drums are self-adjusting, so you don't have to do any manual adjustment, which is nice. Time to loosen the brake lines, one cylinder at a time. Each wheel, wheel cylinder is held on by two socket cap screws from the back. And wheel cylinder number one is, well, it's still on there quite well. There, oh, there we go, comes off. Now one thing, important thing to note is the Brake cylinders on either side of the front of the car are different. They're not interchangeable. So I have to keep them marked when I take them off of where they are so I can compare the new ones with them and make sure I'm putting the new ones in the right spot. Because left to right, they're not interchangeable. I'm repeating myself now. Here are the new wheel cylinders. Now the boxes on these said links, which is German for left. So I'm sure these are the right ones. Goes in like so with the bleed nipple in place. Put the screws in the back. That one's in place. Now for the other one. And tight. And for the brake line that goes between them. This brake line that goes between them doesn't seem to fit in either fitting. So here's what's happened. This is the right fitting for these wheel cylinders, but the brake line on the end where it fits where this fitting fits over the flared part has been smashed down so much that it's split and flared out and now it won't fit in the hole anymore. I don't know if I can show this on camera. Probably not. But this part is so flared out that it's even cracked and expanded too far and it will not fit in here anymore, which means I need to order new parts. That's unfortunate because they take a while to come from Germany. But just because I need to order new brake line for the front left wheel doesn't mean I can't inspect the other wheels, deconstruct them and everything and make sure there are no other parts I need to order. So I'm going to start with this rear wheel here, and I'll probably do the other two off camera because they're the same thing. <laughs> oh, don't fall, please. Okay, just stay there. And this time, instead of using a breaker bar, I'm just going to use my impact wrench here. There we go. I think I'm prying the shoes off, is what I think I'm doing. And I keep looking... <laughs> Idiot. Now on the on the rear brake drum, there is just one wheel cylinder, whereas on the front there's two. There we go. Any day that you don't take a spring to the face is a good day. There we go. Got it. I hate springs. And out you come. These rear brake cylinders were labeled HA! Just said HA in capital letters. I guess that's rear or some sort of abbreviation in German. I don't know. Regardless. These are the rear cylinders. Well, this is one of the rear cylinders. This part on the back here is tedious and annoying. Now to put the brake line back in place. All right, that wheel cylinder is in. Now let's see if I can reassemble everything and not need new parts. Just noticed something a little interesting. The owner gave me a box, an entire set of brand new brake shoes for this car, eight of them, two for each wheel, but none of them appear to be for the rear wheel for the handbrake. The one for the handbrake on the rear wheel has this lever attached to it and none of the new ones do. So I'm going to have to reuse the, this old one with the lever on it. it. The shoe doesn't appear to have too much damage on it, so I think it should be okay, especially since this car weighs, what, two ounces? So I'm just going to reuse this one shoe and put a new shoe on the other side. I hope that's fine. And it's on the top. Now the last thing to do is put the spring tying the two bottom sections together. And that is very difficult. I'm gonna use this ratchet strap to hold back 
these brake shoes so they don't come flying forward on me. Oh, I got it! 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 I got it on there! Oh, I'm excited! Can't you tell? I can take this stupid ratchet strap off and put the brake drum back together. And this goes on which direction? This way. And then smash everything down using the power of air. Then smash down this little wedge here. There. Now that axle nut should probably not go anywhere. Hopefully. Oh, that comes straight off. Out with the old and in with the new. Ah! And now this wheel is done until I go to bleed the brakes. I'm sure you've noticed today that the studio lighting is rather intense because I got some new studio lights. Now, this may, look, may, bleh, this may make me look a little overexposed and albino, frankly, but it's awesome work lighting for me, so I don't care what the video turns out like. This is the Neue right? I just said in English word with a German accent. Like I said earlier, the right wheel cylinders are not the same as the ones on the left. However, I can't tell the difference. So, whatever. I really couldn't tell the difference between the two. But uh, I'm following the labels. This one says Recht, and it is on the Recht. Someone that actually speaks German is going to get mad at me for butchering their poor language. Oh, no! No, 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 no. I've cross-threaded it. These are the two hard brake lines that connect the wheel cylinders in each front drum brake. Now this one on the left side was ruined. It's, it's flared out so much that it's cracking and it's flared out and it won't fit into the fitting anymore. This one was perfectly fine. However, I'm an idiot and I cross-threaded this one and buggered up the fitting. Thankfully the threads inside the wheel cylinder are fine somehow. So I can't use these, these anymore and I need new parts. Now what I could do is order new parts from Trabantfeld from Germany and wait a couple weeks. However, I don't have a couple weeks, so forget that idea. I just went and made a trip to AutoZone, and I'm gonna to attempt to make my own brake lines. I've got the fittings here, I've got the brake line itself, tube bender, tube cutter, and a flaring tool, and I'm gonna, if I don't get good brake lines out of this, I'll at least get a good learning experience out of this. So this ought to be an interesting process. This bit here was really tricky, but I did manage to avoid kinking it. After some minor tweaking, I have arrived at this piece, which looks okay. Now I have to put the fittings on and flare it and see if it actually fits when I go to fit it on there. I think that's fine. Now I have to do the other one. And the other one presents a little bit of a problem because I can't get that down very far. All right, now put this in. Make a trip over to the bench vise again. And we have another beautiful flare. Well, I guess let's try to fit this onto the right front brake drum. Since this is, that's where this goes. Now it's time to fit, test fit this new line between the brake cylinders and see how badly I screwed it up. <laughs> This may be a matter of taking the wheel cylinders off first, screwing the line in, and then bending the wheel cylinders into place for fitment, I think. And then finagle them into place. That's backwards. Did I really? Yeah, they go like that. Uh, that confused me more than it probably should have. There we go. Everything fits. And that's the second one. I just made a custom brake line, a custom hard brake line. I feel proud of myself. Now to do the other wheel with the new knowledge and skill I've just garnered. And this line is in. With my two custom hard lines in place, I guess it's time to reassemble the rest of the front brake assemblies. Now to the other side. Oh, 
I had just started bleeding the brake system, a process I was going to do off camera, but as soon as I poured fluid into the master cylinder reservoir here, all of it leaked out. So that's something I'll have to rectify first before I bleed the brakes. This uh, reservoir doesn't hold anything. Well, I should correct myself. Half of it holds something. The other half just leaked straight out of there. So I need to fix that. <clears throat> I've taken the master cylinder reservoir off and it's very easy to see why it can't hold its liquor. These lines here are completely shot and this reservoir here has a nice big old crack right about there so it can't hold anything beyond that point. Now I can order these new parts straight off Trabantvelt from Germany and get them in a couple of weeks but I want to bleed the brakes now so I need a temporary solution. So what I've done is I've gone on Amazon and I've ordered this line here. This is a brake fluid resistant line, and it was $10 for a foot, which is outrageous. I mean, it could be that this is just regular vinyl pipe and they're upcharging it. I don't know. And as for the brake fluid reservoir itself, I have a different solution. I read something on a forum somewhere, so let's try it out and see if that is, has any merit to it at all, or if I'm just going to waste more of this uh, reservoir. Anyway, let's try it out. I am a buffoon and I forgot to hit record, so here's what happened when the camera was off and I was yelling at no one. I used this soldering gun to melt the crack around here and create some version of a plastic weld. And I'm pretty proud with how it turned out, look at that. All I did was take this flat bit on the soldering iron over here, abuse the crap out of it, just kind of mash it down in there and get the excess material that I was melting around the edges of the crack into the crack. and created a plastic repair job. I would be willing to bet this is permanent. I'm ordering a new part anyway, but it looks pretty good. I'm surprised with that. There's hose clip down. Now let's put some brake fluid in it and see if it doesn't leak all over the engine bay. Fill it right to the top. Look at that! Nothing's leaking. I'm a genius. I know it's only been five milliseconds since we last saw each other, but I have a confession. My brilliant repair isn't. It started leaking from where I thought I repaired the crack. Now, I could have just fixed it again off camera and pretended that my first repair attempt was the first successful attempt, but no, I'm more integritous than that. To find the leak in this thing, I've clipped off one end with a hemostat, put the lid on, and I'll blow air in this end, and I can put it in my little bath made out of half a kitty litter container. So let me get some water. Okay, I can see one leak very, very plainly, but where's the other one? There's a leak right here on this edge, and there's a leak right here on this edge. Whoa! Ha <laughs> ha! Oh. Well, that just showed how structurally sound my crack was, my crack repair was. Not at all! My crack repair attempt eventually failed completely, and I ended up using regular old epoxy to seal the crack. Temporarily, anyway. The epoxy is set on the reservoir here, and now it's time to reinstall it on back onto the master cylinder. I'm sure the epoxy will be eaten up by the brake fluid, but it'll last long enough on there for me to bleed the brakes and make sure everything works. Now, at this point, I'm sure you're wondering, why are you going to such great lengths to bodge this together like that? Just order new parts and get on with it. Well, there's two reasons I'm not doing that. One is I have a video deadline that, frankly, I've already missed, but I have to continue on anyway. That's not very important. The second one, and the most important one, is I don't want to have to wait two weeks for this part to arrive only to find out my master cylinder is broken and needs replacing and I have to wait yet another two weeks. This has already been proven with the front wheel drums because the brake lines in them needed replacing. And if I would have ordered new brake lines, waited two weeks on those to arrive, and saw them, then I would have found out later on that this reservoir was leaking and I would have had to wait another two weeks. So I want to go as far as I can without nor ordering new parts so I can see everything that I need to order. And that's why I'm bodging this together. It is purely temporary just to make sure everything is in line to see what all parts I need to order. And uh, obviously you shouldn't use epoxy in your brake system. I don't think I need to say that. So let's put this on here and bleed the brakes. Now I'm going to bleed the brakes, but I'm going to do it off camera because aside from me shoving my head in a wheel arch and playing with a vacuum pump, there's nothing for you to see. Now I'm done bleeding the brakes. Obviously I haven't tested it yet because the car is up into air. 
But now the next step is to make the engine run again by replacing the fuel system. Visually interesting task. Getting this car to run will actually be pretty easy because it already runs. I poured gas into the directly into the carburetor intake earlier and it ran for a little bit as long as there was gas in there. All I need to do is replace the fuel line and put the Trabant Correct petcock on the bottom of the fuel tank, drain the old gas out, and it should start up just fine. But one of the hilarious modifications done to this car is this disgusting looking chrome bumper, which is on the top bolted to the grill, as well as these externally mounted horns. They're also bolted to the grill. Now this grill is held in by just two wing nuts and it's designed to be easily removed without any tools at all. And someone with these customizations has kind of ruined that. So that's just a little more extra crap to take off before I can actually get to the carburetor to replace the fuel line. And that's annoying. And I'm sure when I take this grill off, this bumper is still going to be hilariously in the way. But yeah, such is life. One more thing about this little Trabant here. I mentioned all the wiring is homemade and they used the worst quality of wiring. All the insulation is cracking off of it. There's lots, lots of exposed wire, especially going to these fog lights here. And <laughs> it's a real mess. I'm not gonna be doing roadside repairs in this thing. That's for sure. Let that dangle there. I guess the first step is to drain it. The float valve assembly appeared to be in excellent shape. However, that being said, the float bowl was completely empty, devoid of all gasoline. So something was wrong and I cleaned it out. This is a theory I have yet to test, but I think getting the fuel line on the bottom of the gas tank will be easier with the gas tank out. So, <laughs> yeah, okay. Ooh, all right. This is the giant fuel canister that I, thought might be restricting flow. I'm probably wrong on that, but it doesn't matter because this whole assembly is wrong for a Trabant. What is that? Here we have exhibit A on how to not modify your Trabant. This plumbing valve, this crappy plumbing valve, that's probably not even meant for fuel, was adapted to this fuel tank using this fitting here that was, I don't know, brazed, epoxied, or some form of bodged on there. And the downside is this is now a permanent part of this gas tank. And that is hugely disappointing because it means that I can't use this brand new Trabant specific fuel petcock valve that I ordered that has a remote shut off so you can shut it off in the cabin. It has a filter and it also has a reserve level. Well, I can't use it. So this is going to go in my personal Trabant collection of parts. And I have to use this crappy plumbing valve. Now I also thought, well, I'll just order a Brand new fuel tank off Trabantvelt, but unfortunately they don't seem to have a fuel tank in stock, which is disappointing. Their parts collection is vast and expansive, but some things they just don't have at times, and fuel tank appears to be one of them. This is very disappointing, but I took the, the float bowl apart on the carburetor and the needle was stuck, so I'm sure that was my problem the whole time anyway. It's nice to get these parts off occasionally and inspect them, especially if they're not hard to access or get off of there, like this fuel tank. It was held in by exactly two bolts. So, no real loss, it's just a real loss. Oh well, time to put this all back together and on the car. Also, I got a new fuel, fil fuel filter for it. I had to actually find this fuel filter by looking in the small engine section of the auto parts store. I found that amusing. All right, let's put this back on the car. All right, let's get this sucker back on there. It wasn't strictly necessary, but I did order a new tube that goes from the carburetor up here to the air intake. The old one was just a little bit brittle. I also got a new air filter that goes in here. One little thing not over here, and und ein little thing not over here. Und ein Horn, und ein nasse Horn. All right, let's put some gas in her. Not very much, just enough to move it around. All right, that's good. What is 
this do? This little keyhole that I was messing with? Let's turn it the other way. What? That clicked something. Hmm, I wonder if that was an ignition cut off. Yes, one of the modifications done to this car is a security ignition cut off in the form of a keyhole mounted externally on the fender. That was it! Ha. It runs! It lives! Is it idle? Oh my god, it idles perfectly. What about the brakes? Stop! Oh yeah, it stops. Well, this thing isn't titled to register, so I'm gonna have to celebrate, celebrate by driving it around my yard like a loony. You know, everything bad I said about the sound insulation, sound insulation and the owner's obsession with it, uh, went through the roof because this is the quietest Trabant I've ever heard in my life out of three. So, <laughs> I think I did a good job here. And this thing runs perfectly, runs so smoothly really illustrates that there is a problem with mine. So great! It's like a little communist Fiat Jolly. Ooh. Well, I guess the only thing to do now is order those brake parts that were bad, the reservoir and the hose is going to the reservoir, and uh, put those on and get this car back to its owner. If you want to buy, if you have any interest in buying this Trabant Tramp, let me know in the comments down below. And thank you again, patrons, for supporting this project. <laughs> I need to get me one of these. Woo! Or maybe I can just fix my own Trabant. That might be a good place to start. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching. Hope this wasn't too boring. <laughs>